This is a video demonstrating the Project MF box I've got set up that's been online for about a year now, 24-7. This is a clone of the hardware I've actually got online. This is my hot backup device. It's a, a Linux server running Debian Linux and asterisk 1.2 with the special patches that enable the Project MF functionality. Kind of the interesting thing about this is that if you see down below here, I've got an extra NIC card installed, an extra dual NIC card. So there's actually two spare Ethernet ports on this box in addition to the built-in one on the motherboard. And uh, this loopback cable that I have connecting the two extra Ethernet ports together is the actual trunk that connects the near and far end sides of the MF trunks that the Project MF um, Project MF runs over when you dial into it. So on this wire, it's running an Ethernet physical protocol, but layered on top of that is actually a T1 type of protocol that provides 24 individual circuits. And uh, it originates from the top one and terminates on the bottom. So the trunks are actually looped back on itself. So um, the switch is actually performing the function of both the near and far end switches in a, in a regular telephone system. So you're both originating and terminating on the same switch. So when you make a call, the uh, the trunk is actually physically this uh, this cable. Um, this uh, the network needs to be isolated from your regular Ethernet connection. That's why we've got a separate connector for that. If you tried to run the T1 over Ethernet protocol on your home network, it would totally crash it because the traffic is continuous and really incompatible with normal TCIP. Protocols. It's not a routable protocol in any case, so you really have to use a physical dedicated point-to-point -point link on it. Um, so it's much different from the normal TCP IP protocol that you'd run over a standard link. And it's a feature that's uh, not real well known, but has been available in Asterisk for a while to facilitate connecting up multiple, multiple boxes point-to-point -point style. The actual hardware itself um, is a modified Weiss thin client terminal. These boxes are designed to be diskless workstations that run a stripped-down version of Windows XP. I came by a bunch of these really cheap. Uh, they don't have a hard drive in them, but I did hack in a fairly small 10-gigabyte uh, um, hard drive into each one. I added, as I showed before, the, uh, the extra dual port NIC card on the back for the, for the trunk. It's running a, a version of Debian Linux, and... Um, it's fanless and it uses passive cooling with a big massive heat sink on the inside. So the only moving part in the switch is the hard drive itself as, as it's spinning. So it's very power efficient and really makes an ideal, uh, ideal platform for building the, uh, the telephone switches up. Uh, it, does have, it has no uh, CD-ROM drive or floppy or anything else. I have to use an external uh, USB-based floppy disk to load the software into it. And what I've done is I've actually cloned off the hard drive on the operating machine downstairs and put an additional cloned hard drive into here so I can do a hot swap um, of this machine if the other one should fail for any reason. And here I'm going to attempt to do a demo of the actual Project MF system. What you see on the flat screen display there is the actual asterisk console um, on the machine that's running down in the basement. I've got a speakerphone here that I'll be doing the test calls on, and I have one of my um, 68HC705 microprocessor-based blue boxes here that uh, it's in a pretty nice package. This uses a little different uh, design than my uh, PIC 12F683 boxes that are um, that are shown here on the YouTube site. And the tones sound a little bit nicer. What I'm doing is I'm putting the, um, the little earpiece from the telephone set right up against the microphone of the speakerphone, and hopefully the Vox circuit will be able to kick in on transmit and we'll be able to actually hear the, uh, the calls as they go through. And on the background here, you'll also be able to watch the, um, the console and see what type of um, messages that asterisk, asterisk is uh, returning. Uh, in response to the various tones and so forth. So the first thing we'll do is on this local extension that's connected into the switch downstairs is to dial the um, the access number that will route us through one of those trunks that I showed on the box before. So we'll turn on the speakerphone and dial 2600.
Now you see the call going through on the console in the background. Now we're getting playback of a ringback tone, and this can be interrupted by playing 2600. And if you watch the console, you'll be able to see what happens as I play that tone. You see it down here it says starting simple switch. That's where the seizure is completed when I remove 2600. And asterisk has added a... Um, the number you have dialed is not in service. Has added um, number, try again. a new switch incoming uh, switch, uh, switching train onto the far end of the trunk. Now what happened was since I was talking uh, when it was listening for digits it interpreted my voice there as a, um, as a, as a series of erroneous MF digits and could not complete the call, so a whole bunch of errors came through. So we'll clear off the console a bit, and now we'll do an actual call to an internal test line. So I'll play the 2600, you'll see the results on the console, and then I'll play back a uh, recording that's internal on the server uh, of one of the um, phone trips uh, recordings. You can hear the wink back when I release the 2600. And every time I do that, you can see the uh, switch attaches a switching train to the far side. That's the starting simple switch message on the console. And the warning comes up because it recognizes there's kind of an unusual signaling situation occurring. The number you have dialed, one, seven. So let's actually uh, supply some valid MF digits to that recording. And now we can actually blow this recording off with 2600, which uh, we did. We disconnected the call with 2600. Uh, there's various other internal, various other internal recordings I have on here for the amusement of people coming in. Probably something a little more interesting is dialing outside of the system. There is a connection to CNET, the collector's network, a group of folks who have used these asterisk boxes as tandem switches to connect uh, their electromechanical switches that they've restored, have operating in basements and other facilities or other museums in the area. So we can dial into that private network using uh, VoIP, uh, using some uh, access codes that I have programmed into my system here. So let's try dialing into an overseas switch that's uh, in England and is implementing an old-time uh, English time recording system. So we'll, uh, we'll actually make that call into England. We'll start with 2600 and then I'll dial the routing codes. Packet loss there on the incoming audio. And we'll blow that off with 2600. And uh, let's try dialing an old directory assistance code, KP131 start. Uh, that should route us to directory assistance. So I have a 131 routing out to a GOOG 411 just for um, a little attempted authenticity. And finally, I mentioned that some um, members of CNET have used uh, asterisk to link together their electromechanical machines. So I'll demonstrate dialing into uh, one of those electromechanical step switches where you can actually hear the, uh, the sound of the stepper as it completes the call.